Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Kieran Schross once again here at Cloud Scholars. And this is part two to our creating a virtual machine for our Azure Beginners uh, series for Terraform. So uh, I just wanna recap what we're doing in this video. If this is the first one you're seeing, I would urge you to go to part one. But if you wanna you know, take on the task of going to part two, initially you can, cause you can download the code from my Git repository. So the objective was to, uh, if you were just hired as an architect for MSP called Cloud Scholars, your job is to help a client get a virtual machine configured in their network, make sure the virtual machine can only be accessed from the client's network, and then the password for the VM should be secured as well. So I originally said this was gonna be three part series, but we're actually gonna make it four parts. I wanted to break it up a little bit more because I like to keep the videos within like 15 minutes. So that's the reason why. So this is what we did in the first part, which is create a network security group. And then we also uh, uh, created a network interface. And then we associate that network interface with a security group. What we're gonna be concentrating on this video is to create a public IP address, associate the public IP address to the network interface, and then associate the NSG, the network security group, to that subnet. So if uh, there's gonna be a link in the description of this video, and basically what it's gonna show you is a bunch of files that we have here, which is gonna be the Terraform Beginners Azure, and then creating a virtual machine, a public IP part two, start and code. Make sure that you go to the start and code and not the finish code, because if you do the finish code, you won't really be able to follow along because you're getting the code that's gonna be at the end of the video. Okay, so let's look at what we have deployed from our last video. So we have the marketing network interface, which right now we see we have attached to, it's associated with a network security group, um, but there's no public IP address here um, for this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to our virtual networks. We're gonna do our marketing virtual network. We're gonna go to our subnets. And if we look, we have our two subnets, but here you'll see there's no security group here. So what we need to do is make sure that we are able to set up our public IP address and then associate our public IP address with the network interface and then finally associate a security group to our subnets. So over here, we're gonna grab this code within Terraform and you can just type in Terraform Azure RM public IP and you'll get to the same um, section. And it shows you how you're supposed to set this up. So you see you have Azure RM resource group. It's always a resource group for most of the, the uh, uh, different uh, deployments. You're gonna see the resource group there for example usage and then you're gonna see the public IP example. So I'm gonna copy this and back over at the code, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna put it there. So I'll call this MKT pub IP. Let's copy this. And I'm going to do this. And for resource group, I'm just gonna do local dot resource group. And for a location, I'm gonna do local dot location. And a method, I'll keep it to static, which is fine with me. And then I'm gonna take away the tags. So let's look at some of the other um, options we have for the public IP. So back over here, we have the following arguments are supported. So names required, resource group is required, locations required, and allocation method uh, is required, whether it's static or dynamic. So we can put this as a stat, uh, dynamic IP if we wanted to as well. Uh, zones, you don't have to put in there DDoS protection mode if you want to put that there so we can say DDoS protection and we can enable that as well if you we wanted to. Uh, DDoS protection plan ID um, and there's a bunch of other things. So we're going to leave it the way it is. Uh, we're perfectly fine with how this is looking so far. So the next thing we need to do is associate the public IP to the network interface. So how would we go about doing that? So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to type in network interface and we see Azure network interface, and then we say, okay. And then for our network interface, our IP configuration, there is a specific uh, wording that we need to look for. So I'm gonna come down here. We're gonna keep going through it. Edge zone, enable IP forwarding, none of these. Uh, IP configuration, we're gonna keep going. We're looking for public IP address. So this says reference to a public IP address to associate with this NIC. So public IP address ID. So back to our network interface, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna say public IP address ID and we're gonna say Azure 
public IP dot ID. Now let's see if this gives us an error message because remember we haven't ran this code as of yet. So to, in order for it to get the ID, it needs to run this code first and then get the ID for it. So let's see if we get any error message. If we do, then we can work around it. So I'm gonna go Terraform plan. It says one plan to add, one plan to change. So the plan to add should be the public IP. The plan to change should be the network interface because we added this public IP address. So let's see. So public IP will be created. That's good. And then will be updated in place. And it says the update that will be in place would be the public IP address known after apply. So let's see what we get from this. I'm just gonna click yes. I'll say apply complete resources, one added, one changed. So now let's go into the portal and take a look and see exactly what was added, what was changed. So I'm over at the portal. I can see there is a marketing pub IP. That is exactly what we called it. So that is good. And then you can see it says associated with marketing net interface. So we do have it there. If I click on the marketing network interface, um, let's see exactly what comes up on this side. We have a public IP address as well. That was not there before. So we are good so far. Uh, right now, it still says attached to a network security group. So let's look back now at what the other tasks that we have in order to complete this video successfully. So the last thing we need to do is we need to associate the network security group with a subnet. So I'm going to go to virtual networks and our virtual network we will go subnets and right now we have no um, security groups associated with our subnets so over here i'm going to say security group and we're looking for azure subnet network security group association so we go through this code it's really great because it shows you exactly how you know your code should look so we have first our resource group we have our virtual network, we have our subnet, and then we have our network security group. And then also, if you notice here, they have the security rules in here. We're gonna go into that in the next video. And then we have network security group association. So I'm gonna take this block of code. I'll add it after, it's fine. So we have Azure network security group association, uh, subnet one associate, which is fine. And we're gonna say what subnet ID, so subnet, subnet ID is one ID, and then network security group ID, we're gonna say uh, MKT ID. So right now we're only doing the first subnet and we're associating with it, and that's for fine with me. And we're gonna now come back here and we're just gonna say, let's say apply. So one to add. And it says to perform the following actions, uh, network security association will be created as well. And uh, is anything else there that it says it's going to do? Some next nice association. All right, so let's go yes. Okay, so now let's go over to our Azure portal and see what we have. So back over to the Azure portal, if I refresh this, so look, we have MKT NetSec here. So now we have the security group associated with it. We wanted to do the other one. We can do it as well. So I'm gonna copy this as well. And I'll just say, I'll call it two. I'll change this to two. And then I'll keep it as the same network security group as well. Now there is another way of doing this where you can do it in one block of code so this way it covers all of them. Uh, but I'm showing you this way for now. Um, in later videos, I'll go through different things like count to kind of show you exactly how you go about doing it that way. But right now we're just showing you this way just so you have an understanding of how this is supposed to work. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna click apply. I'm gonna click yes. So back, 
back over at the portal. I'm gonna hit refresh, and then now we see it here twice. So we were able to complete all the tasks, which was create a public IP, associate the public IP to the network interface, and then associate our NSG, our network security groups, to a, um, a subnet, our network security group to a subnet. And we did it for both subnet one and subnet two. So um, that's a wrap for this video. Uh, this one is a little bit under 15 minutes, probably about uh, 10 minutes. So this is good. So uh, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like and subscribe button to get more content and help me out with the algorithm. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I want to kind of spice it up a little bit and do something where we can do some learning, but associated with some type of scenarios. So this way will help you out with, with your growth and keep you motivated to continue to learn. You know, so as always, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.